Good morning and welcome to this time of morning prayer on Tuesday. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 87. On the holy mountain stands the city he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Bab Babylon, Philistia too and Tyre with Ethiopia. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in it, for the Most High himself will establish it. The Lord records as he registers the peoples, this one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron, and they said, Look, we are your bone and your flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed King David over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for forty years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah for thirty-three years. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, You will not come in here. Even the blind and the lame will turn you back, thinking, David cannot come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, which is now the city of David. David said on that day, Whoever wishes to strike down the Jebusites, let him get up the water shaft to attack the lame and the blind, those whom David hates. Therefore it is said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Milo inwards, and David became greater and greater, 
for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David along with cedar trees and carpenters and masons who built David a house. David then perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Today's canticle is called A Song of Peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Then the high priest asked him, Are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our ancestor Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. And he said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. Then he left the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God had him move from there to this country in which you are now living. He did not give him any of it as a heritage, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though he had no child. And God spoke in these terms that his descendants would be resident aliens in a country belonging to others who would enslave them and maltreat them for 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day, And Isaac became the father of Jacob, and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him, and he rescued him from all his afflictions, and enabled him to win favour and to show wisdom when he stood before Pharaoh, who was king of Egypt, and who appointed him ruler over Egypt and of all his household. Now there came a famine throughout Egypt and Canaan, and great suffering, and our ancestors could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors there on their first visit. On the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come to him, seventy-five in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt, and he himself died there, as well as our ancestors, and their bodies were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had brought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. 
And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you shall go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for an honouring of human rights and for the relief of those who are oppressed. We give you thanks, Lord, for all that is good and gracious in the lives of men, women and children. We pray for the renewal of the church in faith in love and service. We pray for Christopher and Jonathan, our bishops, and for the life of this parish of St. Mary's and St. James. We give you thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments, and the fellowship of your people. Lord, we pray for this local community and for all people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for families and all who are on their own. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. We pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing and we give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you and those you love his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.